Like this, this is this is how we start this. Because I I feel like I wouldn't be here without this guy. And Max, for the amount of time you've been doing this, uh, I've never experienced hospitality in one place because I currently look like one of the coaches here at OSU now with the amount of gear I was just given. Um, so thank you. And go, go Max, Pokes. The, go Pokes. I can't thank you enough for reaching out back to me about this. And I'm glad to have you on the channel. We're happy to have you here, buddy. Thanks, Max. I appreciate it. Of course. I, of course. For you to your journey started at Stenson? So my journey started at Bethune-Cookman. Okay. Uh, Bethune-Cookman University, uh, HBCU school in Daytona Beach. Okay. Two, about a year and a half there, and then Stetson okay. during the, the COVID era, mm -hmm. and then University of Oklahoma for about a year and a half. But we don't talk about them. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, I, I owe, I owe uh, Nick Kroll and the Sooners uh, a lot for my career, so that was, that was a good move, moving to Norman. And then um, from Norman to Santa Barbara mm -hmm. for a little over a year, and then uh, fortunately... Dustin Taylor and Martin Redlicky gave me a call, and here I am in Stillwater. And and for you too, this is your first full time assistant position, correct? This is actually my third full time position. However, this is there there is a, there is a stretch there where I was working a couple unpaid oh. uh, yeah unpaid unpaid positions. Okay, yeah. so for you too, what's the what's the biggest difference you feel like, or what's the biggest change you felt in Stillwater when you took this job? You know, taking this job, I, I, I've been doing this now for a little bit longer. So this is now my, I believe this is my, between Bethune, Stetson, Oklahoma. So this is my fifth program. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I could come here with a little bit more of a experience to draw upon, whereas uh, probably a little more credibility. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas before, you're, as an assistant, you're always kind of building your profile, building your resume, mm -hmm. building your, your street cred, so to speak. And mm -hmm. so I'd say this is the first time I, I came into a job feeling like I re really, really earned my way here. Mm -hmm. um, so that part's been, been exciting. So for you, what do you think the mis biggest misconception is about not just coaching, but coaching college tennis? Man, there's so many ways to look at that. Uh, I think there's a, there's a misconception in terms of e entering the field. It's it's really really challenging job market to break into. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be really really uh, you, you have to love it first of all, and you, you got to kind of be willing to uh, forego short term success for focusing on long term gain. I would say because those first couple of years you're really just trying to plug away and, mm -hmm. and surround yourself with good people and, and learn the industry. And maybe you're not necessarily uh, achieving your financial goals, but if you can stick around long enough and uh, just do, just keep working hard and, and doing good things and eventually down the road, you'll, you'll, you'll get that breakthrough. And, and when we did our facility tour right behind us, where we're doing this interview is the wall of quotes, essentially, or the theme of the week. Max actually has written a quote right behind us. I'm going to try to read it through this. Um, Which quote are we looking at? Oh, you've written multiple. The only one that I saw you signed was that one. Oh, that, that, that one. one. Yeah, that one I wrote. Teams that, most, most of these, Dustin Taylor, I believe, and some of the guys on the team, they wrote on the wall. Okay. Um, because teams that train hard on Mondays win on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, it, that's just a, a little bit of a thing that I like to say just because, I mean, there's up and down the board around the country um, from 1 to 100. There's just great teams around the country, but I mm -hmm. think... Uh, with, it was such small margins uh, in terms of level of tennis, but mm -hmm. I really do believe that uh, teams that are committed to really, really good practice habits and, and, and focusing on what they're doing at the beginning of the week, they, they're often the ones that achieve consistent success mm -hmm. on, the, on the weekend when, when, when you play. And so that's just a kind, of a kind of a fun way we like to say it. Yeah, and, and for you too, it seems like you, you've learned a lot. You've been to a lot of different programs and you've seen different perspectives, you've seen different environments and how things work and things don't. What makes 
I guess, what makes a successful coach? Kind of throwing it into a more generalized question for you. Oh, uh, man, there, there, there's just so many ways to, to view coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, especially in regards to, to college coaching, I'm sure this applies everywhere, but I, I think consistency. Mm -hmm. um, consistency, building trust with the, the players you work with and the staff. So the, the trust allows, allows you to be able to make decisions and, and communicate effectively because mm -hmm. everybody knows that it's, it, it's coming from the foundation of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then consistency to where you're not uh, showing up and providing people around you with five different personalities. You're making sure that, they, uh, that, that everyone's aware that this is very much a job and it's a business. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's also important for, for the, for the coaching piece. And honestly, the best part of the job is, is the relationships and building the trust. Yeah. So I think that combination usually in a roundabout way gives you a pretty good chance. Uh, because we come from several similar backgrounds too. We both played club tennis. You played mm -hmm. at Florida. I played at Xavier. Um, we kind of had that same pathway of looking at it from the outside in. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to understanding what needs to go into it is solid. What needs to go into it is different. And from our perspective, you see a different side of it, especially when you look as not a former D1 athlete, but as a person that has passion for tennis. Yeah, I mean, I think my perspective, I'm probably... I, I know for a fact I'm, I'm definitely in the minority. Uh, coming from the University of Florida, was was one of the the student manager for the women's team and uh, and, and ran the the club program. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, I think that gave me a little bit of an advantage in, in terms of being able to leave school and having having been in a leadership position, uh, running a big organization, fundraising, scheduling, mm -hmm. um, working with over 150 club members mm -hmm. uh, I, I was able to take that and and, and go and in, go into this industry it was almost like a four-year internship on how to to run a really big team okay um and that's kind of my perspective on it how i looked at it and then moving moving through i mean it, it d definitely does help that yes i played junior tennis yes I, I i travel yes i could play tennis at a good level but but i didn't necessarily burn myself out on the front end to where I have a really like fresh perspective and, mm -hmm. and I, I really consider this a lifestyle yeah and I, I view tennis and still very very much with with a great passion for the game mm -hmm. which which I really think you need in this in this industry just because of the hours that you have to stack on you you really have to have that appreciation for it so yeah I mean I, I wouldn't change anything the the way that I've I've come up and the way that the way that it's been for me. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely know that it's more of a unique path, though, for it, sure. It definitely is. And, and for you, too, seeing from the outside, and I actually, this is something I wanted to ask you, too. Uh, I think for you, what's the hottest take that you think you have in tennis, for tennis? This one might get me in trouble. Um, Say a different one, then. No, I mean, I, I think, I think my hottest take. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but uh, I think so. So often, it, everyone is very, very tennis focused, mm -hmm. especially in in collegiate tennis, and everybody's looking for answers Absolutely. on the court. And uh, we're we're able and willing to provide those answers. We we have everything we need here, but it's also there's so much of it is about. Uh, the environment and the people you surround yourself with and, and that internal motivation. And sometimes I don't always think it's as much about the, the actual X's and O's of hitting balls as people might think. Okay. Um, uh, really identifying your character and uh, identifying the things that, the way that you want to portray yourself on the court and all of the intangibles, I think, in my opinion, if, if that's your baseline no. and you focus on, the, on those things, then the, the tennis piece will over time take care of itself with proper coaching and yeah I, I i love that answer because it's hard to i guess the hardest part is seeing the other side of it and seeing because we are the same age yet we're you're dealing with kids that are not that much younger than you but you have to act a level above as a coach to 
show them kind of the right way of thinking or helping them develop their own thoughts and help them develop as young men. So for you, how do you, how do you separate yourself from, or let's say this, how do you separate yourself from the, from the kids that are close to your age and how do you maintain a relationship with them as a coach? That's 28. Yeah. It's t- I mean, fortunately I started f- full time when I was 22. So that was definitely a harder period yeah, because absolutely. some of the players on the team were a little bit totally older, agree. but I, I think having a good acceptance of the fact that it, with the longevity of the job, I'm planning to do this for a very long time. And mm-hmm. knowing that this stage of my career as a young assistant is, is a time unique to its own within the career. Mm -hmm. And so using my my ability to, to be able to still relate to some of the players and and communicate with them and providing a really good bridge between them. And in this case, Dustin Taylor, the head coach, and it's this period of my life is the only time I'm going to be able to do this at this degree, if that makes sense. So I might as well appreciate this time. And then as I, as I continue to get older, um, that will probably, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming will, will, will slowly fade to a, a, a new perspective. Yeah. Um, but for right now, I mean, just maintaining professional boundaries, obviously, but re- recognizing that it's, it's, it's okay to be close to your players. No, I, I think so too. And, and from that similar standpoint, when we were, um, uh, I was a volunteer assistant at Quinnipiac and at the time I was just fresh out of college and most of the kids that I was talking to were the same age and you probably could relate to that in some way because it becomes where do you find the line between personal relationship and coaching relationship what's the biggest difference between the two um you know i think when i I think i've got a pretty good good grasp with the guys they know when i'm um, i'm switched on and switched off in terms of the tennis yeah um i also understand that that back to what we were saying a, a little bit ago I, I, creating an environment for them off the court in my opinion is more important than even sometimes what they're doing on the court making sure they feel comfortable confident relaxed yeah. they, like they they build trust with me um, and then once we enter the, the arena or we enter the practice court or we're in, we're in the office going over film or talking about talking about development or anything um, making sure that that moment is pretty clear cut and different from yep. the time spent in traveling in the, in the, in the van or on the plane or yeah. at the airports. And it's, it's a balance, but I mean, as long as you're conscious and you're aware, you'll, you, you can generally do the right thing. So, and I know you have a team meeting right now, so I'm going to make this last one short. Um, again, thank you for doing this. Of course. Um, what do you want these kids to leave OSU with? If you were to give them one piece of advice, what do you want them to take away from your own experience? You know, when they when they leave OSU, I would love for them to to feel like they were part of a championship culture mm-hmm. and be able to to lean on that for the rest of their life. Now, does that necessarily mean winning every single tennis match that they ever play? No, uh, but I would love for them to really appreciate and remember this environment as something that made them made them better and just really really yeah yeah i I, I, honestly i think i I think that championship just remembering the championship culture that was created here i love that and max thank you again for joining me i really appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this you've had a lot going on this past weekend so i'm just glad to be a part of it uh if you want to go follow max on his journey on twitter on instagram what are the socials that people can follow you at is it bad i don't even know my it's my instagram handle it's your name Oh, it's uh, Max <laughs> underscore Kohler. Yeah, that's there we that's go. The, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's Max. Yeah, Max underscore Kohler. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and Max, thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate All it. All right.